struggle with Trump and other reactionaries, or fascists in this case, we're told that the United States government has to make a sacrifice. It has to offer them a special deal to get to coax them, to persuade them, to bring back that overseas loot and submit it to the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. tax system. Well, that's not the way we see it at the tax Wall Street party. We say focus their minds and encourage them with a tax that's applied here and now saying if you stash money overseas, you might as well kiss 50 percent of it or something along those lines. Goodbye. And then you'll see them eagerly lining up to pay 35 percent. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. So uh, the Trump tax plan, it's also it's demagogic, right? He's got uh, his uh, 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 what uh, the capital gains rate for Trump is going to be 15 uh, percent for people in the uh, the second highest tax bracket. So he's he's got everything calibrated so that he's a couple of percentage points more reactionary, more fascistoid than Jebby. So you can see what it is. It's a purely demagogic uh, performance. Uh, who knows what factors convinced Grover Norquist, right? Grover Norquist, obviously, always looking for contributions to keep his, uh, his scurrilous operation uh, afoot. So um, the other interesting one in terms of policy, remember Elizabeth Warren back in the spring of 2013, May, just as the academic year was ending, unfortunately. Remember, she proposed a 0.75 interest rate on one year of new federal student loans, and that would be come out of the discount window of the Federal Reserve uh, so that the student could get the same rate that a zombie banker could get. And um, since we are not sectarian at all, we immediately launched a campaign in support of that proposal, the 0.75, also because the uh, the interest rate would have been the lowest available. Naturally, we would have argued for a 0% rate out of the Maiden Lane credit facility, say, something like that at the Federal Reserve. But still, 0.75 is better than 3, 4, or 10. And at the same time, we were encouraged to see somebody in the Democratic Party proposing to coerce, to direct to force, to oblige the Federal Reserve to serve the public interest and not just a clique of zombie bankers meeting in an oak panel boardroom. The problem was, of course, that um, poor Elizabeth Warren, um, I guess betraying her mushhead roots, uh, immediately dropped the proposal. Why did she drop the proposal? Well, as we said, the, the Democratic Party put the heat on her. And we're now finding that the way that this happened was a guy called Robert Litan, L-I-T-A-N, uh, and he put out a, um, uh, I guess, an interview. Uh, he posed as a uh, an official of the Brookings Institution. Uh, he overdid his title and his authorization, I guess. Uh, Strobe Talbot, remember him, Clinton's old friend, uh, Strobe Light. Uh, is the current head of the uh, Brookings Institution who is trying to defend Litan because Elizabeth Warren said that Robert Litan was uh, editorially compromised in his attack on her um, her uh, tax. And you'll remember how nasty the, uh, the uh, Brookings Institution was saying, you know, this is a proposal that deserves to be forgotten and spat upon and thrown in the garbage and flushed down the toilet. They, they were beside themselves because it really was an interesting uh, breakthrough. But Elizabeth Warren simply didn't have the guts to keep going. And now she puts out a thing um, blaming Robert Litan, then of the Capitol. His, in, his research was sponsored by the so-called Capitol Group, uh, obviously a... Uh, a group of investors, I guess we can say. Um, so that's Elizabeth Warren complaining. Well, why didn't you keep fighting there, Liz? Why didn't you show us what a fighter you were? They come after you and you fold and you cave. That's not inspiring at all. We're also told now that Secretary of Education Arne Duncan 
is going to be leaving. He's undoubtedly got a lucrative offer from some private, privatized uh, charter school or privatized uh, education operation, because that's what he's been trying to do, uh, wrecking the Chicago Teachers Union and others, taking advantage of the uh, American Federation of Teachers uh, and so forth. So um, that's deplorable. Now, concerning uh, cointel pro stalking, one of our constant uh, themes here, right? We're trying to spread awareness that the old COINTELPRO 1.0 has now been suppressed by COINTELPRO stalking 2.0. And the difference is the old method, 1.0, was fairly crude, right? Typically, the FBI would try to get a provocateur. This would usually be somebody posing as an ultra-left, ultra-left. Go into a group and you say, you guys are not radical. You're not being real leftists. You should be out there. And then encouraging these poor dupes to cross the line into some kind of violence, and then they can all be rounded up. Or even just talk on the telephone and tell uh, somebody recording it right at the other end, some agent, uh, oh, my God, we're, we've got this ambitious plan, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to repeat it, but you get the idea. So that's the old, old style, right? The idea was to set you up to be arrested. And, of course, this continues but now laid over that is the new layer of COINTELPRO, which is designed to essentially split groups, to neutralize them, to make people demoralized, to drive them out of politics, to make them think they're going insane, um, to provoke their suicide in some cases, uh, to uh, essentially make their lives into an inferno of continuous failure and opprobrium. Uh, and triumph over them in this way. Uh, it is imperative that people understand this. Now, in New York City, right, great capital of leftism, I had a chance to sample quite a number of people about this. And my finding is the following, that COINTELPRO 2.0, COINTELPRO stalking, the modern kind, the Stasi Zersetzung kind, right, decomposition, and above all, the op op application of 1.0, 2.0 Zersetzung on the social media is not understood. It's not understood, and the the problem with it is uh, one of the one of the, the giveaways of 2.0 is that it contains plausible deniability. In other words, if if they send in a provocateur who proposes violence, well, then you know that guy can be taped, he can be exposed. You can nail it, right? You can say this is what they did. But with the modern one, it's got plausible deniability. So the, the, often the response is skepticism, sometimes not even expressed, and it's sometimes look at you with glazed eyes and people are thinking, are you really that important? Do they really care that much about you? Why would they pay so much attention to you? Who are you after all? Um, so there's an element of postmodernism in it. Remember, postmodernism generally denies the idea of human greatness or human um, agency at a high level, right? Agency is reduced to a, a, a very low uh, level uh, and uh, to be, you know, if you're a world historical individual, uh, for, well, for postmodernism, that's just not possible. Uh, there is no such thing. So people have this idea that um, th there's there's been a retreat into a very limited conception of the uh, the human ego and the human role. And this, I think, people have got to understand: you don't have to be very important anymore. Coin tell pro stalking has been democratized, and it's extended to everybody, no matter how humble. So watch out. Keep your eyes open. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Here's another note about uh, some of the responses we get now on Facebook. Right, the uh, Tarpley uh, Facebook operation is. Uh, it's extremely uh, lively. We thank people who are expressing their interest. But we're, we're starting to get messages that go like this. Uh, don't you people understand that the Pope is a Jesuit, that therefore you can't trust him, and that the Jesuits are the problem in the world? We get others that say, don't you understand that it's the Israelis or the Jews that are the problem in the world? Or don't you understand that the, um, the uh, immigrants are actually the uh, problem? Well, uh, we repudiate all of this. And the thing that is not noticed about this is that these things come from very ignorant people, people who know very little about uh, the uh, the story of uh, 
say the Jesuits, right? We put out a, uh, a statement on there, right? The Jesuits were founded in Rome with the help of Gasparo Contarini, the Venetian intelligence chief. Uh, they were big in the Spanish Empire, but they were not as big as you think. The Franciscans, for example, ran Latin America for the, um, for the, the Spanish more than the Jesuits. Uh, and of course, there's this inconvenient fact that by 1767, the Jesuits had been kicked out of the Portuguese Empire, the French Empire, the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, Naples and Sicily, Malta, Parma, the Spanish Empire. So <laughs> that's uh, a good chunk of the world. So how are you going to you going to advance a claim that the Jesuits rule the world today when in 1767 they went into a prolonged eclipse? Now, of course, the Jesuits did turn around and um, they got their uh, their revenge on the Spanish by supporting the British destabilization, right? Uh, what goes under Bolivar, San Martin, and uh, O'Higgins and some others, that was done with the help of the British and the Jesuits joined in. This is not the definitive judgment on those guys, but still, that's what happened. It was the British moving to detach Latin America from the uh, from the uh, the, the uh, empire of uh, of Spain. Uh, so uh, <laughs> right now, the the other one is is this uh, meeting that the Pope had with the Kentucky County Clerk. And I think what that shows is not the ability for intrigue, but um, it it's simply uh, the failure to in, to understand this. Right by all accounts, the it, the interview it was it looks like it was a group audience. It was not a general audience with hundreds. It was not a private audience with one or two. <clears throat> it was a group audience. So in comes the county clerk, right, Kim, whatever her name is, <clears throat> and the, and uh, of course as soon as that's over, her lawyer goes out. Huck, Huckster B shows up, and they. Uh, do a victory lap about how uh, they got in to see the Pope and, and very few others did. This is uh, essentially a, uh, a setup. The Pope was set up by this guy Vigano. Um, there are people in the Vatican that want this Pope to fail. And the Pope, I think, rather naively, uh, simply said, fine, bring them in and we'll say uh, – Hello, I'm thinking of uh, Father Lombardi a couple of years ago with Ratzinger. Ratzinger obviously wanted to do an approach to the Islamic world, but he had this unfortunate pedantry where you'll remember Ratzinger said in one of his speeches, 2006, 2007, that uh, he had some Byzantine quote that talked about how, uh, how violent the Muslim world was. Well, uh, that was enough to set off a worldwide scandal. Father Lombardi was the guy who let him say that nonsense, and that is uh, it's crazy. Um, if he'd still had Navarro Valls, let's say. Navarro Valls was the very intelligent Spanish priest who had been the spokesman for the Vatican before that. Uh, he probably would have gotten a warning, don't say this. So somebody needed to say to Fran Francesco, don't have this woman in there because you're going to make people feel like you tricked them. Uh, so he has been set up. Uh, and it doesn't prove he's an expert intrigue or anything else. Now, we got people sending us ridiculous, discredited, uh, idiotic, hateful things. They're telling us, oh, we have to read the uh, you know, recommendations uh, of these uh, forged uh, documents, right? The elders of Zion and other nonsense. So, uh, no, sorry. And then others telling us, oh, it's because of the immigrants, right? The immigrants are polluting our ethnic states. We don't have an ethnic state. I don't want to live in an ethnic state. I want to live in a, uh, a country based on a, a constitution which contains ideas of natural law going back to Leibniz, Machiavelli, and, uh, and John Adams. Um, if you think that Israel runs the United States how do you explain the fact that the Iran nuclear accord has gone through, despite the 44 seconds of, uh, of Netanyahu? Uh, if you believe that Israel runs the United States, what about President Lieberman? How come the Supreme Court didn't put Gore Lieberman in there and then ease out Gore and then President Lieberman? How do you explain all that? It's just, just idiotic. Uh, and this comes, again, from the most scurrilous, discredited, confederate, white supremacist and other uh, sources. So, and also the impudence and the arrogance of these people talking to somebody like me who's been studying it for 50 years. And they say, Tarpley, you haven't understood. You somehow missed the point here that these groups are responsible. Sorry. 
Uh, don't give me that. That's a bunch of nonsense. And of course, um, we're told that uh, you know, th these these that groups have to be scapegoated. I categorically reject the idea that any group can.